Okay, this is buckle your seatbelt time. <laughs> this is, this could be renamed a crash course in healing. Um, the, the theme song for the movie is the way the credits roll at the end. What a difference a day makes. 24 hours of crash course in crack the tough nut of the ego open. And Woody Harrelson plays our main character who's going to go through character transformation. He's a doctor, he's got a beautiful wife, a child, he's getting promoted. Um, he, he thinks um, in this hospital where he works, everything's going great for him and then he's going to be cracked and peeled in 24 hours. <laughs> um, and so basically, you know, it's all happening at the mind, you know, the mind must ask for it. Every, everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. I showed this to one of my friends who was a course friend from Canada one time, and he just shook his head, he just like, David, David. I was like, how dare you show me such a movie, but I said, no, it's great. It's, if you have the eyes to see, and you can see the purpose of it, it's, it's really beautiful. Because uh, we need symbols of the possibility of the crack and peel of mm -hmm. the ego. You know, because sometimes it can seem like a slow, lingering, long process. And that can be depressing mm -hmm. if you lock into such a thing. And so you see a movie like this and you go, whoa, that's the cracking of pride. So it started off with Michael texting me a couple movies, which were kind of, one was like the Polyamore uh, Undoing, and then the other one was with Angelina Jolie. That was a pretty, pretty good one there too. But then we start talking, and I guess Lisa and I, and I said, well, if you really want to crack and peel, you know, then this is... Let's go all the way. Yeah. And, you know, Lucy certainly was that you know, she was the personality she was at the beginning, hemming and hawing out in front of that bank, you know, mm. was cracked and peeled. And that was pretty much a 24 hour, so this one has a parallel with that. Mm. Except this is a doctor who thinks he knows something. And he's got a lot of opinions, and he mm. thinks he's right, and he thinks it's important to be right, more important to be right than happy. And he starts off, he's kind of a, he starts off, he's kind of, he's got this, Part of his mask is like an easy going and uh, he's trying to be helpful. He's trying to be a healer. Doctors are supposed to be healers. Doctors are supposed to save lives. So he's got very much of a self-concept of being a pretty reasonable, helpful guy who's got a great life and, well, the perks keep coming and, you know, beautiful wife and child and all this and this and get a raise and all this and this. But then, you might say that's the problem with the unhealed healer. Is there something underneath the mask of being a healer? Mm. So he's a doctor, so he thinks he's a healer. Most people who are in the medical profession, and in many helping professions, feel they're healers. But they're, they're what Jesus would call the unhealed healer, because there's a lot of pride that's underneath that mask. And that mask has to get cracked and peeled. And so, it, Sometimes can, I mean, if it's going to happen in 24 hours, it's going to be extreme. You know, because it's, it's just Rip like with Lucy. Off. Nobody watches Lucy and goes, oh, that was a gentle movie. <laughs> you know, that was pretty direct and pretty rapid with that blue crystal powder, you know. That was the blue powder kept being referred to after, after the movie. This is, uh, <coughs> I, I marvel at these crack and peel movies. I just <laughs> think, I, I'm like, wow. If you really had a prayer of the heart for, for not having it be so stretched out, then this is like a, an answer to a prayer. So, that's it. Are we ready to go into it? Let's do it. Crack and, so peel? Crack and peel? Let's do it. it. It's kind of, for us, it's kind Let's of enjoyable. This, this is actually our enjoyment. Because, because it's a symbol of what's possible. Mm. You know, even though the, the ego part is like, whoa, man. Oh, it could feel sorry for the guy. There's another part of us that's like, good, good, good. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm calling for, this is what I'm praying mm. for. Mm. Okay, mm. let's roll it.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And this is why a lot of people get into the medical profession. They have some kind of a memory where they feel so bad about something, that they think they have to do something to make up for it, to compensate for it, to correct for it. it sends people off into a lot of work in the fantasy land to try to overcome the heartbreak of something that they, it hurts them so much whenever they think of the memory. So this is our first glimpse of, of the memory that he's not talking about. No expression sessions, no therapy, not talking to his wife, just he's sitting on top of this really difficult memory and these difficult thoughts. And so that's what's going on when his wife is saying, are you still thinking about that young man at the hospital? This is what is driving him. But he needs a way to access that and, and get at it and get at some of these core thoughts and feelings and beliefs. Because all the surface stuff is just a distraction. His whole life as a, as a doctor with all the money and all the glitz and all the perks is just a cover over the pain and the hurt and it's actually his attempt to solve it on his own means. And it's just not working. So that has enormous transfer value if you start taking a look at, if you happen to think of things from your own life where you still have a big charge around them, like unresolved issues, there, it's forgiveness. And, and these kind of movies and your interactions with people just give you a backdrop to start to get in touch with the deeper stuff. So basically, if you listen to it, you can see it's all of his unconscious doubt thoughts and fear thoughts are playing out. So this is actually a gain for him in healing because remember, if it's unconscious, you're unaware of it. You can just believe you're gliding down the highway when in fact you're slip sliding away. When you are distracted on the surface and you aren't even aware of those unconscious attack thoughts and guilt thoughts, the ego is sitting back there in the mind going, I got you, you're twice removed from reality, you think you've got a decent life, you're on a march to death. Because you've got all this unconscious guilt and attack thoughts that haven't been exposed. And, of course you can hear a little bit of Holy Spirit coming through. If you really listen closely to the dialogue, after the, the fancy car, was that like a Porsche or something? Mm -hmm. After the Porsche is gone and he's in the Camaro, the dusty Camaro and everything, the Holy Spirit comes in and says, you're going to trade down. He's trading down. That happened to me. I had, I had a Cougar XR7. I had to trade down to a Gremlin. <laughs> that's the beginning. That's how it works. <laughs> as long as you think you're riding high and pretty, the Holy Spirit is going to have to have you trade down. Because you've got to go way down. You've got to go way down in humbleness. You've got to let go of a lot of pride, a heap of pride. A heap of bigger, better, faster, more. And a lot of us have played that out. Lisa had a red convertible. I remember I was driving behind it. And I you was and flying high when I met you. She was flying high. And Owner of a company, red convertible, Kathy got in the car with you, I was in the back. But, but then, Holy Spirit had you trade down. You could way even, down. way down, way, way, way down. I got the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the point of, of all this. You can start to, the more you get tuned in, you can start to hear the Holy Spirit speaking through this guy. The trade down, that was the Holy Spirit. Because the doctor's got all this, you know, the doctor's concerned when it gets the tools out on the paint job. <laughs> he, he's concerned about paint. He's with a kid who they, they told us has a couple months to live and he's got abdominal pains and this and this and he's concerned about the paint job on his Porsche. This is what the Holy Spirit has to work with. He said, watch it, watch it, <laughs> like dropping tools on there. Oh, then it just, it, it's just the bottoms are going to drop out, drop out, drop out, drop out. Because, remember, everything in this world is backwards and upside down. So when we are humbled, when we are showed, shown the falsity of what we sought for before, the falsity of what we distracted our mind with, we're actually being helped 
even though from the ego perspective and the world's perspective this is the beginning of a nightmare. Mm. From the world's perspective this is victimization, but it's not really, it's actually a profound awakening. You know, because he's not really happy. The doctor's not happy and neither is the kid. They both need each other in the biggest way possible. And of the two, there's only one that seems to have any symbols of spirituality. It's the kid! The kid, of course. <laughs> the kid is praying. The kid is asking for healing, consciously. And the doctor thinks he is the healer, but he has no clue. So, here we go. And he has no time to waste. <laughs> he has no time to waste, no. He's heard that he's only got a couple months, so he's, he's going for it. Next, if you knew the statistics, I'm sure you wouldn't take that attitude. Fuck you. So because that's characteristic of the unhealed healer. The unhealed healer has no clue how to be truly helpful. Mm -hmm. Quoting statistics, quoting scripture, <laughs> quoting all kinds of things, when the Holy Spirit has to be the one that does the healing. Mm -hmm. So that's a beautiful scene, you know, he walks in there and he's just being brought aware of his thoughts, which are really thoughts of judgment. Mm -hmm. He's just looking there and he's seeing the scene and he's going, he's probably thinking, oh well, she's smoking, the kids, sitting back there, he, she's endangering herself and him, and he, he can't refrain from saying what he's saying, but, but you could tell by the reaction of whoever you're with, whether it's the Holy Spirit coming through you or not. Mm. And when you are with someone and you say or do something and they look at you and they go, fuck you, that's not the Holy Spirit. You have not inspired joy. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is invisible, but you can only tell that it's the Holy Spirit coming through you by the inspiration of joy. So that's just a classic little clip there at, of the unhealed healer. And that's, really that's what we're all about. We're not here to teach the world, we're not here to preach to the world, we're not here to teach the world just through words and concepts, we're here to teach through demonstration. And what better way to practice than with your brothers and sisters right in the house? <laughs> if they're inspired and going off we and enjoy, then you know it's the Holy Spirit coming through you. If they're growling and grumbling, or like Benito was on the other day on the <laughs> thing, if they're growling at you, it's, that's not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we're, we're here to teach what we would learn and do it so much, so thoroughly, that we are here to inspire joy. Mm. And that's the only way we really know that the Holy Spirit's having an impact in our mind, really taking us to be the true healer. The true healing of mind is through the inspiration of glee and joy. And I think, you know, we're hitting the, we're hitting the button on some of our TV shows. <laughs> some days. <laughs> Because of the joy, you know, when you feel that. So, he's on a, he's on a ride of a lifetime here. <laughs> he's, it's very full of. What a gift. What a gift. Mm. What a gift. It is. It's to be paired up with someone like that, like with the kid like that. Yeah. I, I, I swear, like, I'm thinking, I'm like, we need someone like that. <laughs> you know? If, I mean, not that we need it, but uh, like, if something like that ever comes in, it would be most welcome, someone like that. We've got you, Nikita. After walking down the hall, we've got you, Nikita. I thought you might say that. She'll be here tired. She's getting ideas. She's getting, she's getting like, a lot of ideas here with this movie. I don't know, what a gift. I mean, that's like clearly Spirit's job right there. Like. And he has like a direct prayer, so it's like nothing to lose. Can't go wrong. They're speaking the same language. Yeah. I you know it's like the same. Yeah. yeah. Language. Get some junior looking just like me. Okay. Here's the Porsche. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> a little custom paint job. <laughs>
And that's just a reminder, you know, we saw the, the hood, we saw the, the, the gang members shot with the bloody and the L.A. just driving through the L.A. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And now we see this Porsche. What, what does any, anybody know the science term entropy? What does entropy mm -hmm. mean? Towards chaos. 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 The whole cosmos is heading to chaos. You just see the little symbols of entropy here. This is the way it goes. It's only the mind that tries to trick itself that it can make a nice haven in the storm of guilt. Carve out a little bit of haven on the surface of consciousness and say, oh, this is nice. But it's entropy. The whole cosmos is moving towards chaos. That's why we need forgiveness. The only way past entropy is forgiveness. We're going to go past that term. So now the, his wife and everybody's starting to get a sense of, of what's happening. And it's just beginning for him. Because he's, all he wants to do is talk about the medical model. And the Holy Spirit knows that his mind is gripped in the medical model. The I know mind thinks it knows something about the body, how the body works. White, you know, heard what he said, white blood cells, red blood cells, shit. Mm. That's the Holy Spirit coming through again, if you listen carefully. <laughs> white blood cells, red blood cells, shit. Duality, shit. You know, that's the Holy Spirit. You, if you have the ears to hear, you can see the Holy Spirit is coming through the kid, big time. Because the kid is the spiritual symbol mm. in the movie. He's going through his own terror and fear, but he's... He's trying to make it to the reservation. He's trying to make it to the medicine man. Mm. He's trying to follow his faith mm. and try to make it over there. And he's doing everything he can in his brief amount of time to do what he feels important. To meet the medicine man, to have the faith and, and like his book says, you know, to, to transcend. He's, he's actually has faith in transcendence and, mm. and the doctor has faith in bigger, better, more. The doctor even tried to scare him with, you know, pushing down on the pedal to go faster. And the kid's like, oh, fast? Would you like to go fast? How's that? You know, and then, so everything that he tries as a defense, you know, it blows up in his face. Think how quick your spiritual awakening would go if everything that you tried to distract away from love blew up in your face. Then you'd be making pretty rapid decisions to change your mind. But this is a hard nut. So the Spirit is just showing us how it's done. He's really convinced he knows something about the body and the medical model and the Holy Spirit's got to really under, undermine that. Come, keep knocking it out, knocking it out. Anne Bancroft, oh, when she finally makes it in the movie, she, we're going to have a metaphysical agent coming in there going <laughs> boom! Going right under the bottom of his entire <laughs> thought system. This guy's just warming him up. When Anne Bancroft comes in, boom! <laughs> Take out the bottom legs of the medical model. Any of you doctors are listening, I'm recording this for you. <laughs> okay, let's go. Good news. Anywhere, okay. Holy Spirit's like, let's come on, let's go. Western bar. Pull in here. Right here. He knows the spot anywhere. He's telling him anywhere. Oh, anywhere. This is over. This charade is over. He says, anywhere. He knows where he's taking him. He's taking him into an old Western bar to see how he does in there. It's like his self concept to be protected in there. <laughs> He's got the mood to inspire joy. The carrot juice, no. That was not the kind of remark. It's not what you ask in this kind of a bar. You don't ask for carrot juice. You see, you've got to have the spirit coming through you. Boom! She drops it right on his sloppy eggs. Like, just like the one that was in the, the fest food store, you know, how she, uh -huh, uh -huh, she, uh -huh. she, they are not yeah. reacting in a positive, loving, joyful way because he, he doesn't know what healing is. Mm. He's a doctor. 
but he doesn't know what healing is, and so he's getting a lesson in you've got to lighten up and trust. It's just loosening his whole thought system. So, so it's trust. The first time he says, I gotta take take a piss, and he he's lying. Look what happens. Talk about infidelity in the relationship. <laughs> There's some infidelity. I have to take a piss, and then he comes in, and he goes, you were fucking lying, and then all hell breaks loose. You see, what lies are not going to work in this healing relationship. You're not going to uncover and become the healed healer through lies. So this, this first lie that we see, really direct lie, you know, it's, you can see the face, it's like there's a reflection, like you lied to me and everything. But, the relationship is, this is a healing relationship. This relationship has been given over to the Holy Spirit. So he comes right back, and he jumps right in. And now they've got the whole town extra because of that lie. So it's just, mm -hmm. it shows how important it is to be mm -hmm. honest, as authentic and honest as you can in this healing, because who, who are you lying to? Mm -hmm. You know, if you lie to yourself, then that just winds you deeper into the illusion. And when you are authentic, then that takes you out. Okay, here we go. So we're going to be running the side roads from now. You maniac, they were going to kill me! I think you're trying to talk to me. Okay, we can pause it there. So, now we're getting... There we go. Now we're getting to the point underneath there where he's asked by his brother who's dying to, to pull the plug on the machine. And you could see his reaction. No, he didn't want to do it. Because the interpretation of a little boy is to honor the request of his brother to pull the plug on the machine could be interpreted by a little boy as killing mm -hmm. his brother. You see where these crazy interpretations go? It could be anything. It could be leaving somebody or doing something that you feel is just the worst kind of thing. It's just that there's this interpretation of guilt of something that was done in a body. And that's the whole ego trick. Anything you think you've done wrong or right isn't the truth because you are in a body. But it's built up a whole scenario here of projections to keep the mind guilty, to keep the mind from going back to heaven. So the little boy just pedaling the bike as, as hard as he can and to race away from the scene is just, and screaming is just, there's tremendous guilt. The guilt over the belief that he killed his brother. You know, his brother asked him to do it. See how that, just like children when their parents divorce, they can think, I split mom and dad up. You know, it's always this horrific sense of guilt based on some kind of memory or behavior. And that's the whole ego's trick. So, so you see what is taken through this whole movie. And the intensity of him throwing his wallet out, throwing his watch out, won't give up the ring, because mm -hmm. the ring was given to him by his brother. You know, he's like, I'd rather die, peel my cap, I'm not giving up this ring. But, it's, and with the guy firing the gun and everything, he took all that to again bring that memory, of that hidden repressed memory. Mm -hmm of the guilt, the interpretation of the guilt of, of having killed his brother. That's pretty extreme to take it. And, and even it's a story about a brother, two brothers. The very story that the, the young man is telling, that got his yeah, attention right away, because yeah. he's like, whoa, whoa. He kept, you want to hear, you want to hear, and then when he started to speak it, it's the story of these two brothers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's all these parallels coming in, it's like, it seem like extreme things, but whatever it takes to bring this dark memory and this dark interpretation up, that's what it takes for healing. 
That's another reason why we have these expression sessions. You don't even know what's going to come up. You don't know. You may go into one of these expression sessions, you may lose it. That's good. It's got to, it takes whatever it takes to get in touch with it. You would rather have it up and out than have it buried down under and then covered over by, by a bunch of surface things where there's no healing happening. This movie is really showing that. Okay. Oh look! Look at the holy mountain! And, and there's the medicine man waving at us! And there's Dorothy! And the tin man! And the wizard of Oz! And the God! Okay, pause it. There's the, that's what happens when you anger, projection, you're just drawing forth the symbols. And you know, in Native American tradition, if, if you get attacked and bitten by a snake, a rattlesnake or something like that, you know, that's a symbol. That's a reflection of your mind. That's part of their tradition. Like, pay attention to the symbols. Here it is, he's flipping out. Now we're seeing some anger, some rage coming out, and boom! Right on the ankle, you know. And, and it was after the question of, is there anything Is there anything sacred, sacred, sacred to you? And he had and then nothing... And he didn't answer, he just no. started projecting. Yes, he started immediately into the projection, yeah. so. This was such a deep movie, so, I mean, yeah, every yeah. frame. Yeah. 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 One frame after before. the next, after the next. <laughs> Where has it been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> we were probably just being born when it came out. <laughs> you ready? Oh, God. Stop. 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 Here we go, we're getting set up for the best part of the movie. <laughs> Here comes our metaphysics. Now, this is Anne Bancroft. She's just a spiritual devotee that's out there driving the trails in her little camper van and uh, and Woody Harrelson's his character he's looking and he's like thinking like this is my chance now meeting a human being is going to be his chance for escape mm -hmm. but this is going to be the Holy Spirit ripping under the underpinnings mm -hmm. of his medical model belief system Ripping under the underpinnings, and so he thinks, he perceives like he's going to try to convince her that the guy, this kid is crazy and, you know, got to get out of here. And she's been sent in by the Holy Spirit to really get down there under the bottom of it. So it's the best part of the movie. Huh. Just stop. Just stop. So we can pause it there. So, he says, I got you down, is, is gone. And after he screams and shouts and protests, you can see that the mind is starting to crack open here. Mm -hmm. the, the ego is starting to crack. Because he's not trying to escape mm -hmm. anymore. He's, he's actually seeing that there's actually some value mm -hmm. in what's happening. If he still believed that there was no value, he would have just walked. Oh, yeah. So that's a big turning point right there, is even in the middle of all the intensity, even when it's mm -hmm. crazy, it seems chaotic to the ego, he said, I've got you down is gone, go. And then he goes through his tantrum and he comes back, because there's something in him that realizes there's, there's, there's something good happening, there's healing happening. Even though it's just barely making the turn. So, so it's not surprising that from here on you're going to start to see the doctor trying to be truly helpful in his own way with what he believes. Which is the same with everyone. Everyone's trying to be truly helpful with what they believe. And then it has to go deeper. So we're going to see that. See how the symbols are so helpful? When his mind changes, they all change from rattlesnakes fighting to to need some horsey cover <laughs> to get where you're going. There they are. Leave them coming up all around the car. Okay. Okay. 
it's like this part in the in the development of trust where Jesus says the teacher of God has not come as far as he thinks he has. So they, he's made the turn. He's actually in collaboration now, and they've come all the way out here following, you know, the the little match match thing that had the sky horse, and they've come all this way and. Now he's just, the doctor's starting to believe a little bit. He's, he's w at least willing to go along with everything, so his, his mind is flipped and all the witnesses are coming in. But this is another great scene about how don't ever think you know anything at all until you pass the test of perfect peace. Jesus said, think not you know what anything is for, until you pass the test of perfect peace. So even with the turn, it's clearly been a turn, now he's got to go, there's more temptation, more anger, more fear. Even after all of that, there's been a lot of it in this movie, it just is a great reminder, like don't think it's over until you have a transcendent experience. Transcendence would be ascendance, you know, a laying aside of the body. So, here we go. He, we're ready for another twist and turn in the plot here. <laughs> this is the part in the course, the healed relationship section, where Jesus says, you will be tempted to get rid of your brother. <laughs> he says it that way too, he says it right there in the court. You'll be tempted to get rid of your brother. And Jesus has one response to that. Hear not this now. That's his response to that temptation, to get rid of your brother. So, here it is. Woody's got a very strong temptation. His little bear, his little faith, he's like ready to go berserk. <laughs> My reputation! Sacrifice. Out the window! Sound of sacrifice. Just another step. You've got, he's come down now into his mind, down, down, down. Mm. He's just beginning to hit the belief in sacrifice. I gave mm. up everything. We all know, we've all been there. <laughs> you go through all that and you think, oh, is this a hoax? Yes, yeah. I had a student one time and she said, what if the whole Course in Miracles is a hoax? Mm -hmm. I worked with that student for years and she was, she was dead serious. Mm -hmm. And I just looked, had to look her in the eye and said, You actually have that thought in your mind? She said, Yes I do. She said, Did you tell me that you've never had that thought? And I said, I looked her right in the eye and I said, I have not. <laughs> but you can see here, he's, he's had enormous faith, but down, 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 and here he's just hitting the belief in sacrifice. I gave everything up. I'm a fugitive. You know, you hear, it's just the ego ranting through the whole process because there's still more to go. Here we go. Director of Oncology, out the fucking window! <laughs> we'll get all jacked up. In the van, I had to shave or brush my teeth or bathe or change my underwear in three up. days. I, I, I have dirt in every pore of my body. This is his expression <laughs> session. He's getting, still all of his grievances. He's just hitting the sacrifice belief and all his roaring grievances are coming. You see how his hope comes up when he hears Whitehorse. He's like, <laughs> there's some symptom, something to salvage what he's always done and now He's like pleading, you know, but it all, it's just great. It's just showing all of his grievances are just pouring out now. Just oozing out everywhere. Before he wasn't saying any of them when he was a doctor but at the hospital, but now, you know, all of this has brought his grievances up. So now watch, I thought, well this is really a healing, healing movie, but I thought, will it go all the way? Will it go for the Grand Slam? Will it go to Ascension? Can it go that far? Let's watch. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> you want us to leave? You're gonna have to shoot me. In fact. I'm thrilled. 
So even her faith is starting to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the, the power of the healing. She was, you know, pretty much turned away from it. He, all of them have had their periods of time. She could see the Spirit working with all of them. And then just what they need, just when they need it, is given. And not a second before. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the gratitude, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just, that's the invisible Spirit working through all these images. So now, you know, he was able to help them so he didn't fall into the coma. Because now, the doctor still, even, even after his trial of faith there, he still believes that there must maybe be a sacred mountain. And he hasn't given up on Blue's, Blue's faith that he's joining with now. So it's like a, it's, they've gone from, you know, tremendous undoing partners now to they're joining in the faith. So this is where the movie has the potential to go all the way, because the faith is, of course, the faith is, is all of this world is a misperception, and as the Flash Out crew over there has been saying for a long time, <laughs> that, that, the, that it will just disappear if you have the faith to go all the way. So it's, there's, there's going to be a Flash Out symbol that comes along with this too, which is, I mean, that's going all the way, <laughs> way, 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 way. So here we go. And it's Final in the canyon. Yeah. It's in the canyon. Yeah. In the canyon. So we can pause it there. So this is great too, is they're just coming up to the sacred mountain. Here comes the helicopter, so this is the two worlds. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to see two worlds. The world always says there's some kind of a mystery, or a crime, or a chase scene, and the police show up, the FBI shows up, the army shows up, somebody shows up to do what they do, to bring in the culprit, and this, that's one story. And then there's this mystical belief that there's something beyond this world, and that there's actual healing and awakening, which has nothing to do with helicopters. <laughs> mm. And so they're driving up there in faith towards the sacred mountain and now the helicopter's coming in. That's great. Just when you get close to mm. the resolution, you can bet the ego is going to throw in symbols of the other story. Like, you fool, you crazy thing, you go for this crazy flash out. You go for this crazy, crazy transcendence, transcending the world. You know, the ego is going to throw in all of the world to say, you know, you're ridiculous, this is all crazy, it's, it's hopeless, it's worthless. So I love how this movie is very symbolic. Here come the, the police, so to speak, uh, with the helicopters in, just as they're coming to the sacred mountain. So you really, it's like just a symbol of you have to keep your faith even stronger the closer you get to the transcendence. Because the ego doesn't want you to transcend, because if you <laughs> transcend, then the ego's game is over, and actually you see, was never, never was there in the first place. It can't really be over, because it never started. But it's coming to that place of, of seeing, oh my God, love is all there is. Beyond the body. That's what's so great, we should have a great commentary with what's to come beyond the body, is the spirit. It's okay, man. It's okay. Everybody oh, recognizes okay. the journey. You <laughs> <laughs> go all that way, you scream, where's the God day? See, you're trusting me that I'm taking you on a journey here. You're just yeah. all hanging in there like... <laughs> Right okay, we're, all right, we're halfway through the movie now. No, just joking. <laughs> halfway through the movie. Just joking. <laughs> okay, here we go. Where's that medicine Skywalker? Let's see some Skywalkers. We want Luke Skywalker. Look at him. 
Yeah, he, look at how he's that's not a great shot. Yeah. At no, all. no, he look, isn't. Look, that other guy. He's like, oh god. He's like, oh shit. He's like, it's he's, cool. He's certain something's like, gonna show up. He's you not know. concerned. He's like, he's got the thing. He's got. He's got nothing to lose. No, yeah, no. Shit. He's kicking back. He's been being carried now. Yeah, yeah. He's being carried. <laughs> he's, even, he's faith. He's even working stronger and stronger. He's got, like he's got nothing to doubt. No reason to doubt. And he's like, it's cool. This is it. <laughs> Just up there, right above that. I was watching all the names. There it is. It's the whole way <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's one of those rapid, rapid awakenings. Yeah. Yeah, I watched these movies. I remember the first time I saw it, I started to get that feeling like, where is they going to go with this movie? And then. On the body. That's beautiful. Mm. But it's good to have reminders like that when the temptation is to think that things have gone all wrong. Mm. This kind of movie show, oh no, no. You can't judge your advances from your retreats. How, how could you judge anything if the world's backwards and upside down? And you're waking up from something that's backwards and upside down. How, how could you meaningfully judge anything at all? So it's like a total free fall, total dropping, surrendering. Yeah, that's good. And whenever you start to get depressed by thinking how long it will take to completely change your mind, just remember. Jesus says in the Course, how long is an instant? He throws that question back, but just think of this, what a difference a day makes. This was mm. basically, 20, it was like, uh, pretty much like Lucy, 24 mm. hours to enlightenment. Mm. It's just really rapid. <laughs> it's like, with Lucy, you know, she, she was, you could see all the signs and symbols of, of her using the full potential. And with this one, it was just keep the faith and trust, even when it starts to turn. There's so many points where the doctor was ready to like lose his faith. He was just really ready to just rage at being a, a gullible fool. <laughs> or having lost his whole, whatever, he perceived his self-concept to be, but, yeah. In the end, they weren't enemies at all, they were collaborators. Saviors. Saviors. Mm -hmm. You saved my life, he said. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. From an extreme juxtaposition to, thank you for saving my life. Well, it's yeah. ironic because the kid saved his life. He didn't save the kid's life because the kid dies. You know, and he mm -hmm. goes into the lake and off into the... It's interesting. So it wasn't, you know, it looked like it was for the kid, but it wasn't for the kid. Mm -hmm. It was for the doctor. Hmm. He doesn't die. He is sad. <laughs> <laughs> that was an ascension yeah. thing. You heard splash, but no body. <laughs> He goes into the mystic. He, he lets go of the world. The he lets go of the world. Of, like he's done. His body left. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's a good point. He didn't die. He did not mm. die. <laughs> but the line from the Course is, teach that I did not die. Mm. But teach that I live in you. Yeah, yeah that was great. 
that was the big hurrah for me at the end. I was like, whoa, that was lay aside the body scene. Mm -hmm. Disappearance of the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really liked when the medicine man met him, the way he reached him. You know, it was just such a great welcome. It was like, I'm so glad to see you again. It's like, your homecoming. Yeah. Yeah, my long prayer, answer to a very long prayer. The last song when he was eight, that's mm. faith. Mm. And all he had was a phone number, a book and a phone number. That's his Course in Miracles and his Metaphysical Center phone number. <laughs> and we're in the lunch, these are the lunch chairs. <laughs> <laughs> we're and getting in position. We're in position. We're in look, position. and Suzanne is gone. I know. <laughs> the, 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 one that, the one that the one that talked about the flash here. out is has been she flashed. flashed. <laughs> she, yeah. she was the first of the flash out talkers. <laughs> and it's really cool because he's young. It's like like I didn't see it like as he died at all. Like he's young, and it's almost. I'm like, I'm just like looking through my mind, I'm like, yeah, that's right. Mm. So it's like he's young, but this is kind of like it's not like again, the symbol that you don't have to be like it's not about the age, right? It's yeah. like the awareness can hit at any time, and and even that he was a prisoner, he wasn't really a prisoner. It's like he, it's like already he didn't have lo a lot of investment in the world, and then he's like, okay, what like this whole this whole world holds nothing that I want and off he and he was just that ready and off he went and so meanwhile it's like like that's it he was like ready to let it go already like yeah. there's no value he had like absolutely no value and then it's like he was even more and more carried and carried and carried and and like it's like that like in the beginning when he made that prayer like, that was like that's kind of like that's it it's like that's like almost like as strong as it gets, like the prayer from the heart, like let the beauty be before you, let Christ be before you, behind me, above me, like everywhere. It's like that's it, like like letting go of all of it and it's like and there he was and it's like almost like he was going for it like that and 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 you know, like Everything else was kind of like, like, like Lucy, yeah, like, like that. In a way, it's kind of like, like, in a way, it's even like, like, they're one. It's like, even, it's kind of like, underneath it, all the doctors, like, that's what he had. It was like that deep reflection of that. He, he too, like, it's almost like he knew he was in prison. It's like, already, although there was like, a concept, but he was in prison. It's like, he was... It was hunting, something was hunting and everything. It was like too much anger and and it's like and so it's just that like reflection. It's like like very strong reflection. Like he was going into nowhere, not knowing how to let it go. It's kinda it looks like he's you know, he's done well in the world, but it's like this is something else. And the it's prayer for beauty, cool. it was like their prayer together. Yeah, their prayer, yeah. And I think progressively, too, as, as that was the prayer of the whole movie, then you could see more and more that there was more and more of a, of a love that grew stronger and stronger between them and a love for everything, and also more and more disregard of the body. That, I mean, that's, that's got to be the most disregard when the body disappears. You know, because remember that movie, What Dreams May Come, mm -hmm. where, you know, the the guy kept, he, he said, where are my children, where are my children? He said, you'll, you'll see them when you want to see them. Mm -hmm. It takes a while before, he's, he's not ready to see his children. But in this case, he was ready to, he had really disregard for the body all the way through the movie. Yeah. It just grew stronger and stronger even to allow the body to be carried uh, yeah. toward the end, and then to go running down towards the lake, which he never had seen until he finally comes to it, and then then the disappearance of the body is like he he didn't need to see it anymore, 
it didn't yeah. it didn't serve anymore and that's how our desire grows for God stronger for love for love for love and then we start to have more disregard for the body disregard disregard and then it's so disregarded that it dis disappears right including the world that's the thing to the disappearance of the universe that's because you, it's no longer desired or needed so that's kind of important when you think of this because we've gone through all the phases but you start to see everything we're doing with with this place or with the monastery or with books or with sweetie or Christmas trees or anything but it's all part of a pulling our investment away from appearances so that there will be no need for appearances at all. And it's good to remember, we're not trying to make better appearances or ultimately we're not trying to change appearances. It's just withdrawing all investment from the appearances, which is what Lesson 128 is. The world I see holds nothing that I want. So Jesus is just saying, well if you don't want it, it won't be there for you to see. Or I want the peace of God. You know, peace of God is my one goal, the aim of all my living here, the end I seek, my purpose, my function, and my life while I abide where I am not at home. That's just like saying, there you go. Turn your desire and your mind towards the peace of God and away from the appearances and then they won't be there for you to see anymore because you won't want to see them. So that's, that's really going into the mystical. But it, hasn't it been a ride, huh? <laughs> hasn't it been a ride? It's been a ride. I feel like we're just, we're on the ride, we're doing the high fives with each other. Yeah. Right. Whoa! I feel like we're going into the And then again, whoa! Then, whoa! We're, <laughs> we're on the ride, you know? Yeah, it just feels like all, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm a believer, okay? <laughs> you got me. Yeah. Yeah, there was a time in your life you couldn't read the Bible, wow. then you got the Course into your house, but you couldn't read that. And then that real deep angelic experience with the truly believe, truly fly, mm. that was such a blazing light experience that you could then, you could read the Course. You picked up the same book, you go, Damn, you could actually read it. Just one mystical experience took you in readiness. The I'm whatever wide open. light years ahead, I even read. wide open, I you can even I read it, and then you have one like... angelic experience, and then. So that's why when people put down mystical experiences, hmm. like oh yeah, mystical experience. Oh yeah, one, one. Old, I had those three revelatory experiences, and that. My life was never the same. Yeah, that changes everything. And of course, the miracles was in my house. So I had three revelatory experiences, and then that one student who said, "What if the course is all just the biggest hoax? What is this? <laughs> it's the biggest hoax in the history yeah, of the world, and everything." Because, Not after you have revelatory experiences, you know. I right. said, "No, <laughs> sorry." <laughs> I said. And she said, "Have you? Can you actually tell me that you have not had that thought?" And I said, "Yes." I have not had that thought. <laughs> but then she went off in her life to go onto this spiritual path. It was all balance. Balance. Oh, good luck with that one. <laughs> busy. That's a lot of work. And I went off to live your life in harmony, let go of all you see.
So mystical revel revelation is different from mystical experience, huh? Well, it's a lot of people have a lot. I was talking to somebody on, oh, this uh, psychic from Canada was interviewing me, and he was saying, what's the difference between like psychic visions, you know, visions of the future or the past or whatever, versus mystical experiences. And he told me then, he said, he told me his mystical experience, which was, it just took him into absolute oneness, and the whole world disappeared. Uh -huh. And that's what revelation is. He, he was on, interviewing me on his show, and he said it just, one minute, it was, I, I had a body, and the next minute, there's nothing. It's just all love and oneness, and yeah, it's beautiful. So he was answering his own question of the difference between like doing a reading for somebody, and telling them what's going to happen in their life in the world, versus everything goes. It's just love and oneness. And he said, "There's nothing apart from me. I was everything." You know, there's just the words of yeah. Reminds me of an old Jack, Jack Jones song. It only takes a moment. <laughs> Your heart knows in a moment you will never be alone again. It's just that I always hear these old songs from the 60s. Oh God, just, it's great. Or, hey now, hey now, da da, the dream is over. Hey now, hey now. Oh, that's a good one. There's, a good one. <clears throat> There's no walls between Ooh, us. I'm like, whoa, God. <laughs> blow me away. <laughs> blow me away. <laughs> what more can I say now? I give to you. It's our friend Jacobs right. from uh, Denmark. Or he did another song. I'm the holy child of God in heaven. We love that one. I'm the holy light that shines always. Walking through this world in perfect safety. From darkness and from fear I know I'll raise. I'm so happy. <laughs> You know these songs are... <laughs> we just put a string of these songs together and it's like, oh my god. Don't get us started, we'll be doing a full chorus <laughs> later or something. Right, we'll be the singing mystics. Mm. Instead of chanting <coughs> Gregorian chants, we'll be singing these great songs. My love is warmer than the warmest sunshine, softer than a sigh. My love is deeper than the deepest ocean, wider than the sky. Oh, you know that one, Mike. My love is brighter than the brightest star that shines every night above. And there is nothing in this world that can ever change my love. 